Hey everyone and welcome to my sourdough series. I talked on Instagram how I've been getting a lot of questions about sourdough and I wanted to share you with you guys. So you guys decided that both reels and a YouTube series would be best for your learning. Sorry if there's any background noises. You guys know I have animals and kids. Apologies. Nothing I can do about a certain level of noise. This is going to be a mini series. I'm going to break these steps down into six mini videos that I'm gonna push out as fast as I can. And it, they're gonna be quick and short and sweet. I'm gonna try and keep them, you know, 10, 15 minutes long, so I'm not gonna talk forever. Um, just to show you guys exactly how to make sourdough. And then if you just need a refresher, you can go over to my Instagram and there will be, you know, one and a half to two minute reels refreshing each of these steps in very like quick speed, obviously. But this is where you can get the details and learn how to make some sourdough. So this is sourdough for busy moms. The biggest takeaway I want you guys to have is that sourdough can be simple. The bread community can be a little intense, which is really weird and ridiculous to say but sourdough gatekeeping is absolutely a thing and it's ridiculous. I'm just here to tell you it does not have to be complicated. You don't need a million gadgets. You don't need to know what you're doing. Sourdough starter is super hardy. You're not gonna kill it by like missing a step. I promise you after watching these videos, you will feel good about starting your own sourdough and I'm sure that you will be baking amazing bread by the end of this series if you're not already doing so anybody tells you you have to be a master baker or you have to have all this time to be able to bake sourdough run the other way come here grab a tea I'm gonna show you how to make quick sourdough as a busy mom because nobody has time to be in the kitchen for two hours nothing fancy no complex methods this sourdough method is truly for everybody don't be afraid to bake bad bread. It's one of my favorite phrases. It's don't be afraid to mess up. Don't be afraid to do things badly. Don't be afraid to make bad bread. Everybody has made a bad loaf in their life. Um, even the people that have been baking bread for years and years will still make a bad batch of bread once in a while. It happens. Don't let that stop you because you can absolutely bake your own sourdough and feed your family. And you don't need to take a course or some master class to be able to make bread every day. That's silly. Come on over here. I'll teach you how to make bread. We're gonna have a good time. So here's what I'm gonna be teaching you guys in this mini series. This video, we're gonna teach you how to make a starter. How to make a starter from scratch if you do not have one already. You're, you literally have nothing, but you're interested in making bread. This video, we're gonna get into it and we're gonna teach you how to do that. Video two, I'm gonna teach you how to feed and maintain that starter for longevity. What to do if you wanna go away on holiday. What to do if you don't wanna bake bread every day. We're gonna get you covered in that little mini video. Video three, I will be sharing my 30 minute of hands-on bread method. So this is a quick for busy moms bread method. I've been using this for a couple of years now and it is my go-to bread method. I'm gonna teach you how to do it and bake bread for your family every day if you want to. Video number four, I'm going to teach you how to bake your bread. So video number three, we're learning how to make the dough. Video number four, we'll be learning how to bake the bread and bake your loaf. Cause it is a tiny bit more than just throwing it in the oven, but you got it, it's okay. Grunty baby is agreeing. Video number five will be your daily bread tasks. If you want to make daily bread, I will be showing you my schedule for how I maintain that while I homeschool my kids, work, do all of the other things. Your daily tasks that you need to accomplish to be able to bake daily bread and how to balance that into your schedule. I will show you that in video five. And then video six, if we need it, I will do a Q and A, help you guys troubleshoot, answer any questions you have through the series. So if you have any questions throughout these videos, place them down below. If I don't answer you right away, please don't worry, I will. It's just because I'm saving that for the last video so I can answer your question in depth in a video. So I hope you guys enjoy this mini series. Let's get started with video number one. Here we are how to start your first sourdough starter. I almost forgot to give you guys your supply list. Supplies needed is very minimal, but there are two things you are through. Mm, there are a couple things you're going to actually need. You don't need fancy bread stuff. I didn't get my first bread basket and dough hook and everything until this year, and I have been baking sourdough for years now. So I promise you don't need any fancy tools. You can start with what you have in your kitchen, no problem. The only thing you actually need are two jars. Now they can be any jar. I recycle jars, so I have this closed top jar that I use, and I have this jam jar from Costco that I use with a lid. Um, just two glass jars that are wide mouth, so you can get a spoon and a spatula in there and preferably ones that have a lid or a covering of some sort. The other item you do need to have 
I'm sure you don't need to, to have this technically, but like this is one I would really recommend. It's just a chicken, a chicken, a kitchen scale. Just go pick up a cheap kitchen scale. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. This is what mine looks like. You just need something that's gonna measure grams and that you can zero out while you're baking bread. Don't worry about that. Don't let me intimidate you. We'll get to that in the bread baking video, um, but you'll need a kitchen scale and then a Dutch oven. Again, Dutch ovens can be incredibly expensive. I have this one from Pioneer Woman. It's not a cast iron one. It doesn't have to be. This is like $30, so it's quite cheap for a Dutch oven. You don't have to buy the 60, 100, $200 cast iron Dutch ovens. If you have one, that's great, but this is a Dutch oven. It's just this little cute pot with a lid and you do need this to bake good sourdough in my opinion. Some people don't bake with this, but foolproof, easy, no complicated. Grab yourself a Dutch oven. It'll save yourself a lot of hassle. Um, as you can see, we use ours a lot. It's, it's seen better days, but we love it. Now, if you want to get started doing your starter with me, then you can grab your jar, your flour, and some filtered water, and let's teach you how to create your own starter. Sometimes you see people like me even selling dehydrated starter. It comes in a little package. This is my dehydrated starter. You can buy it from me if you want. Just shoot me a message. Um, usually it's in the apothecary shop, but that's not technically open right now. Um, but all this is is my mature starter dehydrated and packaged so that you can start it at home. And I'm going to just explain really quickly the difference between starting a starter from scratch in a plain old jar with flour and water and what is the point in buying a dehydrated starter from somebody. It's not complicated. The only difference is basically when you're doing your own starter like I'm going to teach you, you can think of this as more of a baby starter. It's young, it hasn't had years potentially to mature and get all that good bacteria. It hasn't been going for ages. Whereas if you buy somebody's dehydrated starter, this is the dehydrated version of their years old starter. Um, it stops the bacteria activation and it doesn't activate until you re-add your water and rehydrate it. So um, when you're starting with a jar method, you're doing a baby starter. Still totally fine to bake with. Every baker started with a baby starter. And if you're going with a dehydrated starter, it just means you're a little bit ahead of the game. Once you rehydrate this, this starter is as old as that person's starter was. So if I say, oh, I have a three-year-old starter and you rehydrate this, you now have a three-year-old starter as well. So that's the only difference between using a dehydrated starter and a starting your own baby starter. Um, you can bake bread with both. This might just make a little bit better, more mature bread, but they're both gonna be great, so don't worry about it. So what you're gonna need for this video is one glass jar with a lid, spatula for scraping, a one fourth cup measure, you can use one measure or dry measure, it doesn't really matter that much here. Again, you, if you've baked bread or you're a bre bread baker, a sourdough aficionado, you're gonna hate these videos because I don't think you need to fuss that much. I make beautiful bread every single day for my family that is delicious with no fuss. I don't worry about exacts. We're not trying to be fussy here. We're just trying to feed our families good, healthy food. And so if that's what you're here for, then you're in the right place. And then of course, you're just gonna need some flour. I use Robin Hood unbleached flour. It's important for me to use unbleached flour. That's something that matters a lot to me. It doesn't have to be organic. It doesn't have to be fancy. I use white flour because that's what I bake with predominantly. So that's what I feed my sourdough starter with. So any flour you have in your cupboard is totally okay to start your sourdough starter with. And if you switch up your flour later with like an unbleached or a bleached, it's not gonna matter that much. So don't worry too much about it. All right, everybody, let's ignore my sourdough starter that I have going. Let's pretend I have nothing and we're gonna start our own sourdough. So here's our clean washed out jar. It's really important that you use a clean jar. I keep my flour in an ice cream pail because it's easy, because it has the handle that I can pull out of my pantry every single day. I also keep a tablespoon measure in my flour permanently because I feed my sourdough every day. So if you wanna do something like that, keep it in a bucket or whatever that's easy to pull out, that just makes life easier, but you don't have to do that. Now creating your starter is really easy. The hardest part about it is being patient. So it's going to take you a couple of days, but I'm gonna explain that after. First, we're just gonna get started and make this, and then I'm gonna explain what you need to do every single day. Okay, so let's make your first starter. This is so exciting. Okay, one fourth cup of filtered water. It is important that you use filtered only because um, it can affect like the stuff that's in your tap water, chlorine, fluoride, whatever is in your local tap water could affect your sourdough's ability to grow yeast. 
because those things can kill the yeast or the bacteria. Because remember, all we're doing is creating yeast. Instead of buying a package, we're just making our own. So one fourth cup water goes in first. Always put your water in first. It just makes it easier to mix. Then we're gonna add six tablespoons of flour. We're not gonna be too fussy. I just shake it off. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And then we're gonna mix it. Now, again, I'm not gonna over explain myself. I'm also not gonna be super fussy about this and use fancy wooden stirring spoons or anything. I'm just using the spoon because it's what I've got and it's fine, totally fine. <laughs> just mix that up until all the flour is combined into this weird sticky brownie batter situation you've got. Now, this is a little thicker than I want. Let's show you right up close. Do you see how this is like more of like a goopy, see how long it's taking to fall off my spoon and it's just like a thick oatmeal kind of consistency? That's a little too thick for our first starter feed. So we're just going to add a tiny little bit more water. Again, I didn't measure what's in here. I'm just using the same one and I'm just going to add a little bit, set it aside and I'm going to mix it. We're looking for like a brownie batter consistency It's all. If yours looks more pancake batter than brownie batter, don't worry, you didn't mess up your starter. Just do a little bit at a time. This is pretty good. I think I'm happy with this. So now, see I just added a touch more water. If I would have added a little bit more, it, was, it would be fine still. Do you see how much more runny this is? Where it actually falls off my spoon now? I just want you to get a really good visual of the consistency a little bit like Greek yogurt, brownie batter, whatever visual works for you. And do you see how lumpy this is? The flour is not fully mixed in. There's lots of lumps. That is good. That's okay. That's what you want. So I'm just scraping down the sides of this. If you want to scrape your spoon with your finger, you can, but you just have to make sure you have really clean hands or you can introduce different bacteria that you don't necessarily want. But it's, again, it's not the end of the world, it's fine. Next, you just take your spatula and we're just gonna see how I got it kind of all over the jar. I'm just gonna scrape it down. Otherwise, this stuff on the side of the jar is gonna get really hard and sticky. And here's something you need to know about sourdough. Anything that the sourdough starter touches will dry like glue. So make sure you wash everything, your finger, your spatula, anything that it got on right away, otherwise, it will be really hard to get off. Just trust me on this one. <laughs> okay, there's our baby starter. She has begun. What I'm gonna do, because I don't actually, I'm not gonna actually seal this completely. And because I want to, just because of this type of jar that I'm using, what I like to do is take a cloth or a piece of paper towel, place it over top with a hair elastic, and just, whoop, and just do this. And then I loosely set, oh, I put this on the wrong way. I loosely set my jar closed. So if you're using a closed top, like I don't actually bring it all the way down. I just set it there because it just makes, prevents my starter from drying out a little too much on the top and forming a crust. Um, you just want it to keep, stay warm and moist. If your house is cold, you can keep your sourdough in your oven turned off or in your microwave. Um, but I find most kitchens are warm enough to be fine. Um, I have a really hot house, so I just keep mine on top of the stove. Just find the warmest place in your kitchen to place your sourdough starter. And if you're working with a jar like this, I've got a spoon in there right now because I have to bake with mine. Then you would just set your jar on top. Um, don't screw it, just set it on top and so it just sits there and covers it and creates like a nice little moist dome. Okay, now let's have a quick chat about exactly what you want to do now that we have made our little baby sourdough starter. How are we going to maintain it? How do we get to making bread? Let's keep this super sweet and simple. It is easy. Trust me. Take out a pen and a paper if you need and jot down these things. You need to know that it might take you 6 to 12 days depending on how warm your kitchen is, where you live. Somebody in Hawaii might have a quicker 
fermenting starter than I might in Alberta, Canada, where it's minus 40 through the winter. So those things can affect it, but still, but don't worry, I'm gonna teach you how to look out for those signs so you'll know when your starter is ready to go. When we talk about feeding, when people say, what, I'm gonna feed my sourdough, feed your sourdough every 24 hours, Feeding just means what we just did, giving the sourdough starter water and flour. It's just like a hungry little baby. We're just gonna feed it. We feed it water and flour. We started the sourdough starter with the exact method that I use to feed my sourdough every single day. I didn't wanna give you guys anything different. I wanted to keep it as li little complication as possible. So you're just gonna feed it with that one fourth cup water and that six tablespoons of flour. You don't have to do anything different, I promise. <laughs> Now that you know what a feeding means, you're going to feed your sourdough starter every 24 hours about. I'm gonna go into a little more detail in a second here in case you need to vary that slightly. But again, you will know, I promise, trust yourself and you really can't mess sourdough starter up that badly. So it's, it's hardier than you think. Okay, so we talked about how we're gonna feed our sourdough every 24 hours. I do mine in the morning. If you have more time in the evening, right before bed, then you can do that. You can just adjust the 24 hour period to be whatever f fits you, whether that's two o'clock in the afternoon, five o'clock in the evening, whatever works for you. You don't have to feed it in the morning just because I feed mine in the morning. That just works for me because I have the habit of baking bread every morning. Again, your starter might not be active and alive for six to 12 days because it's just a baby and you have just begun the process of growing your yeast. So we wanna grow that yeast until it is yeasty enough to bake bread with. So that's all we're waiting for. And again, six days, perfect. That can be ideal. That's usually the average, but if it takes you 12 days, that's okay too. It's not a big deal. You didn't kill it. You don't need to throw it out. So this is how we're going to feed our starter. Tomorrow, when you are ready to feed your starter again, you are going to discard half of it. Just throw away half of it. It's not good to keep until it's active anyway right now. So for this first week while you are creating a starter, you throw away half. Eyeball it. If you're slightly under half, it's okay. You're not going to kill anything. If you're slightly over half, it's okay. You're not going to kill anything. Do your best to eyeball what half looks like and chuck it in the garbage. And then you feed it with one fourth cup water, six tablespoons of flour. Do exactly how I showed you. Water first, then flour. Give it a mix. Scrape down the sides. Set aside. You're done until tomorrow. Now, after 24 hours, you might start to see some little bubbles inside the sourdough starter. That is great. Sometimes it can take up to three days to see your bubbles. If not, that's okay. Just be patient, keep going. It's not you, it's probably your climate. So don't worry if it, you don't see your bubbles in 24 hours, it's totally okay. And 24 hours later, you're just gonna do this every 24 hours, every morning, every night, whatever you choose. I'm gonna just use talk about what I use. So every morning, you're gonna come back to your starter, you're gonna have your coffee or whatever in the morning, and you're going to feed this baby. You're gonna throw out half, feed one fourth cup water, six tablespoons flour, scrape down the sides, put it aside. You're going to do this for six days, at least. So if your sourdough starter is gonna activate within six days, around day four, you're gonna to start to notice more bubbles. As you go, you come back to it in the morning and you'll see, oh, it's really bubbly. Or maybe right before you go to bed, it's starting to get bubbly, it's starting to rise. That is wonderful news, congratulations. If not, that's okay, be patient. It's probably the climate, it's not you. Just keep going with your method until you have a nice bubbly starter that has clearly risen and fallen. So usually for most people, if that happens by six days, sometimes it takes longer. I just wanna just, I'm, I know I'm repeating that, but I just really don't want you to worry if yours is taking long. And if you're like, Rambo, how do I know that it's ready? Ready, it's just gonna mean that it is rising and then falling within six to eight hours-ish. That's how you know you're ready to bake some bread. After five days that you've been feeding it, and you notice on day five, you go to feed your sourdough starter, it's bubbly, it's looking hungry, nice and bubbly, that's hungry. Um, maybe it has a little clear liquid on the top of it, that's great. If you, you notice that it like it had some rising and then it fell back down, that rise and fall line, I'm just gonna show you my sourdough starter and I'm gonna get up close. See right here on my jar, this is where last night my sourdough rose, 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 all the way up to here and then it fell. So this is the slide line where you can see, this is where I like scraped it out, but you can see the difference. This is like where it was poured and this is where it was, it rose and then it fell. You can just see some remnants on the side of the jar. 
Again, my sourdough starter is really mature. It is years old. So it, I have a really big rise and fall. Um, you can totally get that pretty soon. Like sometimes it takes longer. For me, it took longer to get that. Um, for you, it might not. So by day five, you're hoping that you see lots of bubbles and maybe a line that it, just to show that it has risen and fallen at least a little bit. Now you can even take a dry erase marker or something and mark where your sourdough started. And so you can see if it rose past that line at all. Um, some people use an elastic on it. You don't have to use anything. If you just wanna eyeball it, that's okay too. If your sourdough on day five is bubbly, it has shown you signs of rising and falling a little bit, of being active, of being hungry, and things are going seemingly really well for you, then on day six, you can go ahead and try and bake your first loaf of bread. Um, it might not be the best loaf of bread ever. That's okay, we're gonna troubleshoot bread later in the next video. And if your starter is not quite ready, then just be patient, give it time, keep going. If you need to, if you wanna experiment with maybe moving it to a warmer spot, like maybe the inside of your microwave or storing it inside your cold, not turned on oven, <laughs> that's okay. You can experiment with placing it in different parts of your kitchen. I keep mine on the stove top because it tends to be the warmest area of my house. We're gonna go into how to maintain your starter from here on out um, in the next video. So look out for that in two days from now, hopefully. And just remember that the more active your sourdough starter is, the more bubbly, the more it's rising and falling, the more you might have to feed it. If you really live in a really warm climate or your house is really warm and your sourdough starter is doing that rising and falling process really fast, you might have to feed it twice a day. Um, and that's not a big deal, you'll know. Cause if you're still lumpy and sad with no bubbles in your starter, then you know it's not ready to be fed. But if it's bubbly and active, then it's hungry and ready to be fed but it is important to feed it only after it has peaked or bubbled or rose and slid after like that three day mark. So if you hit day three and nothing has happened, it has absolutely not risen at all, you have no bubbles, give it a little bit longer before you feed it again. It's okay to like kind of play with these hours and how long you wait to feed it because once you have an established starter, it's not as fussy as some people think. Like sometimes I don't feed my sourdough starter till one o'clock in the afternoon. It's not a big deal. Today I'm feeding my sourdough starter late. It's hungry because I'm doing videos and baking with it and, and filming. So it's taking a lot longer to feed it. Just know that continuously feeding your sourdough starter when it is not bubbly and not hungry, you're just gonna dilute that yeast more and more and make it take a lot longer. So just make sure you're getting some action, some bubbles before you feed your sourdough. So just to recap really fast, you're gonna feed this sucker for five days. You're going to um, hopefully see some bubbles, see some action. Every morning you're gonna go and you're gonna feed it, discard half, feed it one fourth cup water, six tablespoons flour, give it a mix, scrape the sides, put your lid back on and go on with your day. She will be ready when we have risen and fallen, lots of active bubbles. It doesn't matter if it rises to the top of your jar and then falls. It doesn't matter if it just rose a little bit. Rising and falling is what you're looking for. And by day six, if you're getting some rising and falling action, you can totally go and move on and try and make your first loaf of bread. If your first loaf of bread turns out absolutely crap, then you know that you weren't quite ready. Take a little bit more time feeding your sourdough every single day until you notice, okay, it looks active, let's try again. Um, and just know your first loaves of bread that you bake are not gonna be as good as when your sourdough starter is a month old, two months old, three months old. The more mature your starter gets, the better the bread will get. So don't be afraid to bake bad bread. All right, you guys, I hope this was helpful. Hopefully not too long. I know I talked a lot in this one just because this is a little bit more information heavy. I know you guys have so many questions if you're brand new to sourdough. Um, so hopefully this was helpful. Look out for part two of this mini series. Um, how to feed and maintain your sourdough starter. That will be a lot faster of a video and probably information you did hear here, but um, that we will reiterate and I'll teach you just how to maintain later. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this first in our mini series and we'll see you in my next one. Bye.